everyone, it's Misty and I have another project using chenille for you. We're gonna make these great embellished pillows and we can even add a little tassel. So I'm gonna teach you this chevron pattern today, but in the printable, there's actually a few different styles so you can select which one you want to make. Let's go ahead and sit this back here and dive into the supplies. So the supplies gives you enough to make three of these pillows. You're going to need just under two yards of whatever fabric you choose for your background. You'll need a roll of the chenille. I'm using the natural to kind of match with that background yardage I chose. And then if you want to make the tassels, you're going to need this great tassel maker from Clover and some yarn. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. Move these out of the way. So if you have a light box or a window, that's gonna be super helpful for this. I'm using this cutter pillar light box and I've gone ahead and printed and taped together my template for the chevron shapes that we're gonna be using. And then I have cut from my background fabric a 16 inch square. So I have this ready to go. Whoops, if I can get it open. There we go. And so you're gonna have a 16 inch background square and then you're also going to have two 16 by 12 rectangles that are gonna make your backing. And so let's go ahead and mark our lines so that we can add our chenille to this. So I'm gonna turn this on. And this just helps make it so easy to see through. And I did go ahead and press some lines so I can kind of line this up in the middle of my fabric and just have that for a reference point. And I'm just gonna start about an inch and a half down. I'm just eyeballing it here. And then keep in mind, you're, you're either gonna wanna use a wash away marking pin or you know this chalk marker that I'm using because you will see this on the finished project. So now I'm just gonna use this and follow along with those lines. And I will meet you back here when I have the markings done. All right, so I've gone ahead and marked those first two rows. You would just continue down the pillow until you have four of these sets of chevrons made. And I did wanna point out that I used a ruler that just helps um, have a guide to roll this along. And so whatever is easiest for you, that's what you want to do. So now let's just pretend this is fully marked and we can talk about adding the chenille. Go ahead and set this out of the way. So I absolutely love this product because it gives so much texture with very little effort. And so if you're not familiar with this, this is a woven bias roll of fabric that we can just lay on top of our marking. And I like to just kind of center it up. And then we're gonna straight stitch right down the middle of that. And we're gonna work our way all the way down this. So they actually recommend that you cut little segments. Because it's bias, I have found that I can pivot this and it goes a lot faster. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's go ahead and take this to the sewing machine. All right, so we're just going to line that chenille it up right down the center of that mark that we made. And then we're gonna make sure our needle is centered on our presser foot. And then we can start and just, I like to keep the chenille it right centered with the presser foot so that I know I'm stitching right in the middle there. And then I just watch as this next line approaches the needle and I leave my needle down, lift my presser foot, and then I can pivot this whole thing. Because it's bias, it will just shift right over. And I just kind of keep and make sh and an eye on making sure that this is spaced the same consistently. And that helps me stay right on that center line. So now that I've shifted, we can just keep on sewing. pivot and I just kind of use my finger or a stiletto under there to keep things nice and straight and continue down 
So I'm just gonna finish this and make my way all the way down this first line of chevrons. to the end of that so I'm going to back stitch a little bit and we can clip our threads where did I put my scissors there we go now that I'm at the end here I can go ahead and snip this off just like so and then we'll just continue in that exact same way one line after the other and so now let's talk about finishing this off because once you have that whole panel done it's going to look like this you can see I've added all of my rows of chevron and it looks really great. And so now we can either just add our back rectangles, which I've just hemmed the long sides, just like so. And we can sew all the way around the outside edge, toss this in the washing machine and it will fray up. But if you want to add a tassel, you actually need to wash this part first so that the chenille has the opportunity to really fray and kind of, you know, mess itself up, give it that texture that we want. And then that's what's going to give you this look like this. The reason that I recommend that is if you wash these little yarn tassels, they're really going to get kind of nasty in the washing machine. And so you have to add that after the fact. So it's up to you if you want to add the tassels or not, but this is where you would make that choice. But let me go ahead and show you how to make a tassel. So let's sit this out of the way for now. And I have been using this Clover tassel maker. It makes it super, super simple. And so we're just gonna take this out of the package and I have extended it one little notch. There's a few different sizes that are built in and you just unscrew these and it slides. It's very, very simple to use. And then I've got my ball of yarn here. And so I am just going to hold it along the bottom and we're just gonna wrap. Getting started is the hardest part. We're just gonna wrap this. And I just kind of eyeballed until it looked like it was gonna be thick enough for me. But I'd say you wanna do 20 or 25 times around. You want it to be nice and full. Whoops, there goes my yarn. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So now let me grab those scissors. We can snip this one off even. And then I'm going to loop through this whole thing. And I like to give myself plenty of string here. And we're gonna tie a square knot. So left over right, right over left. And then we can trim this off. All right, and so once we have that secured in the middle, there's actually little slots on each end where we can slide our scissors and it just trims through that. And so now we'll flip it around and we'll do the same thing on the other side. I just like to hold the middle, make sure it's still even there because after you cut the first one, it's not as tight. There we go. Whoops, I missed one. There we go. All right, so that first knot that you made, I'm gonna hold that up and we're gonna fold the rest of these down, just like so. And then we're gonna make another knot with our yarn. like to make sure I have plenty of tail. Whoops, hold on, slipping out of the way there. Just slide that down. There we go.
We're going to knot that through and pull it tight and knot it again. You can do two or three knots here. You just want it to be really secure. You don't want this to come out. It is hard to keep track of which little end of the yarn is the one you want to hold on to, but there we go. That's what we're looking for. So once that's done, I just like to brush all of these to one side and then kind of trim them even. So I'm going to trim this off. There we go. And there's our cute little tassel. Isn't that so fun? So now we can throw these in the trash. And let's look at our finished pillow top again. So when you lay this out, if you're gonna add the tassels, of course you would have washed this, this would be frayed up already. And then you will lay your tassels in like this so that the long strings are sticking out of your seam allowance. And so you would have one on each corner and you wanna get it pretty close, like three quarters of an inch from that edge. And then you'll lay these backs in and you're going to want to secure these with pins or clips so they stay out of the way just like so we'll pin all of that into place and then you'll just finish this off with your quarter inch seam and so then it turns out just like this in the end which is so fun and so cute. I absolutely love it. And we even played around a little bit depending on the design. Like this one here, we added some tassels on the top, just wherever those little swirls ended, we added a tassel, which I think is really fun and different. And then this one here is without the tassels, which is still super cute. So whatever you decide, it's still gonna be a great project. I hope you'll give it a try and I can't wait to see what you make. I'll see you next time on At Home. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching At Home. We're so excited to be almost a million quilters strong here at Missouri Star. And so if you haven't already joined our family, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of all of our future tutorials. And we'll see you soon.